Hey. Good day guys, welcome to Endurance Room. I'm out doing a woods walk with another new pack. I just put this together out of an old Marine Corps pack. It's nice and slim, close to the body. If I had to guess with water, I would say it's not even 15 pounds. So give me a second, I'll pop it off and we can take a look at it. The bag was made out of an old Marine Corps pack. It's the M1941 series. This is the lower portion of that series, the knapsack. It was used to carry the soldiers extra shoes, shirt, you know, just extra belongings. And then the top portion, the haversack, was used as the fighting pack to carry what they needed out into the field. But I've had this for about two years. I hadn't really done anything with it. I was thinking about selling it, but then I decided why not try and make something out of it. Originally the pack was folded in half and then it had two canvas belts that cinched it down. I just did away with those straps and used the whole portion of the bag extended. So the dimensions right now are about 12 inches across, four inches deep, and this is about 17 inches. It works out to 13.3 liters, which is just enough for a day hike or a really minimal overnighter, which I've got loaded up for today. The exterior of the canvas, I used beeswax and just went around it. I took it out in the sun, let the fabric heat up and just worked it in to the fabric to give it some water resistance. The top of the pack is some light green leather that I had left over from an earlier project. I reinforced this buttonhole and then I used a wooden toggle, similar to what you'd see on a plosh palaka. The straps are from a Y harness from some LC2 gear. I stitched the straps into the back of the bag. And at the side here. I've got my plush palaka, which is a poncho or a shelter cinched up on the bottom. Getting in and out of the pack is easy enough with the toggle. Right at the top, I use some paracord that I strip the inner strands out of to leave just the nylon tubing. So I've got two pieces stitched to either end and then some paracord loops to give it a place to cinch through. Uh, just to show you what I got. Got a military space blanket, cotton bandana, work gloves, fire kit, navigation. This is an East German grenade pouch. Portage and a shelter kit with tent spikes and a ridge line. Folding saw. Steel water bottle. What is to be a sewing kit. And an ultralight sleeping bag. So it gives you just enough room to carry the basics for a night in the woods. I've had a few people ask about how I'm putting this stuff together. One of my main tools is the speedy stitch. It's a little wooden awl with a couple needles on the inside of it. Just screws off the top. I always use the straight one. There's a groove in the needle itself for the thread to run through and then the holes right at the top at the tip. You line the groove up with the groove in the awl. Put the cap back over and tighten it down. That locks the needle in place. I use it a bit differently than standard. There's a small spool at the bottom that the thread comes run through and it runs right out through the handle up to the needle. I prefer to keep my thread right on, right on a spool and I'll just measure the piece to length for whatever I'm working on. So to stitch this up, I need a piece of thread that is twice as long as the intended seam, which I've got right here. Thread the needle to where nice and even on both sides and then I lock it in place by wrapping it around the little button you can further lock it down by pressing into the thread with your finger 
So I've got material folded in half. I'm just gonna go along the edge here about a quarter of an inch down in. You push it through by giving a little twist and then pull back. That'll expose the thread. And you pull it through. You only have to do this one time. You pull it through, then pull the needle back through. Make your stitch. And on the smooth side of the needle where the, where the groove is not present, as you're pulling the needle back, that forces the thread up through, which allows you to, to make that loop. So you're just running the thread through the loop that you just made, pulling it back, and that's the first stitch. Each time you're going through, you're just locking it in place by running it underneath itself, running it through the little loop that you're forming around the needle. It's really simple, it's really efficient. Tie the last one off. Taking the thread out of the needle. So I've got two open ends here. So I'm gonna tie an overhand knot and then another overhand knot making a square knot. Pulling it up nice and tight. And then to lock my square knot in place, this is the hardest part for me. I'm gonna make an overhand knot. Cinching it right up to the square knot. There we have it, the tags are there. Just trim those off. So with these basic tools, I was able to make this pack. I was able to make the Veshmashuk clone, my pack frame, and a bunch of other stuff over the, over the last year. And that's basically all I've used, just the speedy stitch and simple needle and thread and some scissors. It just takes some time and a little practice and each piece you make, you get a little bit better at it. It's a worthwhile skill to have. You're able to keep yourself going out in the woods. My backpack broke last year camping with Catherine. We were out in upstate New York for ready for a three day and we were probably five miles in going up this mountain. The shoulder strap on my backpack snapped off at the bottom and ripped out of the pack. I was able to tie it up with some bank line, but if I would have had this little kid on me, I would have been able to fix my pack in like five minutes and gotten back on the trail. I encourage you guys to try out the speedy stitch and make some of your own stuff. It's worth it to know how to fix your own gear. If anything breaks down, you're not able to go out and buy it immediately. Or, you know, it's either that or doing without. Why not be able to make it? Here's a little box turtle. He's just chilling, doing his thing. There's some deer moving right across the stream. 